Okay, um, this is going to be a super quick review of vectors. Um, one of the important things is that in the curriculum that we're using, uh, sometimes we represent vectors in a way that maybe wasn't the same as what you did before. So um, this may be review, but uh, let's just start off with a vector. So here's my, let's say, x and y axis. And here I have a vector, vector a. Uh, and let me, it's a distance, I'm just going to say. And let's say this is uh, 3 meters, and that's 20 degrees. I'm just, just making up stuff here. Okay. How would we represent that vector um, in component notation? Well, in component notation, what I want to do is, is break this into a component along the x-axis, plus a component along the y-axis, plus a component along the z-axis. So you can see the right triangle right there. Uh, I can get the magnitude of the x component is going to be, I can write it like this, a equals um, 3 meters times cosine of 20 degrees, right, because uh, hypotenuse times cosine 20 will give me the adjacent side of that triangle, that's the right triangle, and put a, a brace like that, this is how we represent things. The y component is going to be 3 meters sine of 20. And in this case, the z component is zero because it's, it's not coming in and out of the board. So I'll just say zero meters. So in general, this is how we write a vector a equals ax, ay, az. If we have a component already like that and we want to find the magnitude, go back backwards, I could just say the magnitude of a would be the square root of ax squared plus ay squared plus az squared. Just like the Pythagorean theorem, it works in, in three dimensions too. Okay, um, what else do we need to know about uh, vectors? Let's say, and I, I didn't multiply that out because I'm lazy. Um, okay, let's just say that I have a vector, a different vector b, negative one, to negative 3 meters. A vector has to have units, okay? Um, sometimes we're lazy and I don't put them on there, but if you don't have units, then it's not a real thing, which sometimes can happen. But it, if it doesn't have units, that's important too. Um, each component has to have the same units. You can't have 2 meters that way and 5 newtons up. That just, you can't do that. Um, but what I can do is multiply, let's say, multiply or divide this. Um, I can multiply this by, um, I'm trying to think of something, let me say this is meters per second. Okay, just so it will make more sense. Um, so that's the velocity. Then I could find the momentum by multiplying by the mass. Let's say it has a, a mass of 2 kilograms. So P equals 2 kilograms times B. And so that would just be this scalar component just multiplies by each of the components inside. So this would be uh, negative 2, 4, negative 6 kilogram meters per second. If I want to add two vectors, um, let's say I have a vector C equals uh, 0, 1, 2, kilogram meters per second, then I can do C plus P, it has to have the same units though, would just be the sum of the components. So it's going to be 0 plus negative 2, 1 plus 4, and 2 plus negative 6. Now another very important and useful thing is the unit vector. The unit vector is a vector along the axis of the vector, but it has a, a magnitude of 1 and no units. And, and that is confusing why we call it a unit vector, but um, it is the unit. Kind of think of it as you can multiply it by uh, something, some quantity to make it into a vector. Okay. So let me just show this in general. Let me keep that same vector b. And I want to find the ma a vector in the same direction as B, but with a magnitude of 1 and no units. 
So I could I call that b hat, and that's just going to be the vector b divided by the magnitude of b. So in this case, I could write that as negative 1, 2, negative 3 meters per second. And then this is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. So this is going to be, that's uh, 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 9 is 14, so the square root of 14. Uh, but this is going to have units of meters per second, so those cancel. So I get negative 1 over the square root of 14, 2 over the square root of 14, negative 3 over the square root of 14. That's it, there are no units. Um, now, you could go ahead and find the, the magnitude of that vector and you would see that it has a magnitude of 1. Okay, one last thing. Um, and that there's, a, there's more with vectors, but I'm just trying to give you a, a quick uh, review so you can watch things later. Uh, for both classes that I'm, I'm working on, you're going to do something like this. Especially in, uh, let's say I have an electron right there and a proton right there. One of the important things I need to do is find a vector like this. I'll call that vector r. But normally I'm given a vector location, let's say, from the origin. So let's call this r minus is a vector from the origin to the electron. And r plus is a vector from the origin to the proton. Now, how would I use those to find r? Well, one of the things that you can always say is, you can actually uh, remember that the change in position from here to there is like final minus initial, right? And whenever you change from one to another. So I'm going to end up at the plus, start at the minus, so I could write r equals r plus minus r minus. And if I know the vector r, and I know the vector r plus, then I can find r. And that's something that you're going to do a lot in both, in both classes. OK, I, I think that's enough um, vectors right now, but I just wanted to put up something with vectors.